Well, th thank you all for being here. Uh, and those that will be watching online, thank you for watching this. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because we want to hopefully help all of our counselors and sponsors at these different camps both get on the same page uh, uh, thematically, uh, but also kind of get on the same page with our rules and our expectations. Uh, we find that knowing those things beforehand helps a lot because once the week starts, everything is so crazy and such a whirlwind that it's a hard it's a hard time to learn everything on the fly. So that's kind of our goal here, to, to help run through all of this and give you guys a head start. Uh, so this is both for our uh, 678 camp, which is now officially under NYI this year. Yes. And it's also for our 9th through 12th grade camp. Um, those will be at different locations coming this next year, different times, but our general set of rules are pretty much the same. And towards the end, we'll do just a little bit of Q&A on the kind of the differences between the two camps. And they're, they're pretty minor. Um, but I'm just going to start with our theme, uh, and our, our goal for any camp that NYI does, and really any event that NYI does, is to create a space to encounter God through play, prayer, and worship. Uh, and we take all three of those things pretty seriously, uh, and we really think that all three of those things are places where teens will encounter God. Uh, and it honestly, it'll probably be different teens for each of those things. Some of your teens will love the play aspect. Uh, and so one of the things that we really emphasize is good sportsmanship and, and playing safe, but also having fun competing and, and uh, kind of the camaraderie that comes from being on a team. Uh, there are teens that, that can really find God in that place. Uh, also through prayer. Uh, we have a lot of introverts these days. Uh, we've always had them. We're just becoming more and more aware of them, I guess. Uh, it's because they're so quiet. Uh, but uh, prayer is an incredible way for them to experience God. Um, and it's also an incredible place for those of us extroverts like me to finally shut up and listen to God. Uh, but we believe that is also an important aspect of camp. And then finally, our, our worship. And ideally, our whole lives are worship. Ideally, that is reflected in everything we say and do. Uh, but during camp, we have a really special and specific opportunity to introduce teens to a particularly intense time of worship. Uh, a great man once said that camp is a place where the membrane between heaven and earth is especially thin. And I love that. I love that. I think that is so true. Camp is a place where it just seems like heaven is especially close. And so that's, that's why we have the theme that we do. Uh, we feel like... This is a place for both us as a camp board and then all of us as adults to create a space for our teens to experience God. Uh, and so as we talk through the rest of today, I would just encourage you to try and frame everything that we talk about with those ideas in mind. Uh, and, and that's also why we created the theme that we did for this year. Uh, we are pretty happy with it. Uh, and I believe Jen is going to come up and talk to us a little bit about what that is. Thanks, John. So our theme this year is called Thirst, and that's for the middle school and the high school camp. And so for Thirst, we, we came up with that because, you know, when we're, we have a bunch of teenagers out in the summer running around, you get thirsty. Um, he's laughing at that. <laughs> no, that's not really it. Uh, even though that is very, very true, we get very thirsty at camp. But um, it comes from John chapter 4, where Jesus encounters the Samaritan woman at the well. And he asks for a drink, and he says that he's thirsty. And, and, and so they get into this conversation that starts with water and goes to so much more, the living water, and that, that she, she needs. She needs the water from Jesus. And so as, as teenagers are beginning to see, especially in middle school, they, they notice this hole in their lives that God can only fill. And this, this deep thirst and desire that they need, they need him. Um, and, and there's nothing else. A connection with people can't fill it. Um, you know, another guy, another girl, or whatever. It just, no, none of that. Um, even, even having, you know, the best grades or being the best at whatever sport they're in, that, that's not going to fill that, that thirst, what that thirst they have for is Jesus. And so it's just kind of bringing them to that encounter and showing them the story but also helping them find where they fit in that story, whether they're one of the disciples that are like, what are you doing with a Samaritan woman? Or the Samaritan woman realizing, oh my gosh, Jesus actually wants me. He wants to sit in conversation with me. Or, or maybe you're just one of the crowd going like, what is going on here? Like, what, how, how is he, you know, and, and, just, and just trying to find your, where you are in that story. And I think we can all put ourselves 
based on our timeline where we are with the Lord in different spaces, or maybe we're needing to actually be Jesus to someone else and reminding them there is living water for you and, and you can find that through Jesus. So that's kind of our theme for this year. We, we really believe that the students are going to be able to put themselves in this and, and grasp the, the term of thirst. That's something they're going to be able to relate and connect to. And hopefully, like, whenever they think of that term from this point on, they will, they will be able to be triggered and remember what, what camp is about. So I'm going to turn it over to Tom, and he's going to talk about our philosophy. So we're going to talk a little bit about why camp. I'm assuming everybody is here uh, and they're watching this video at some point in their life because they've already answered that question, but we're going to jump through that anyway uh, together. It's a good question to ask because there are lots of things that we can be about in the summer. There's all kinds of possibilities in the summer. So why invest in camp? Why should we have a whole team of people throughout the year planning uh, camp to make it happen? Why? Should we have youth workers help raise money for teens to go to camp? Why encourage people to go to camp? I, I think there are some really uh, some good reasons and things that uh, we need to think about when we think about that. So the first thing I think about is this. Camp creates space for us to hit the pause button on our everyday life in order to have special times of shaping and formation with God and others. Um, we get that chance to just kind of pause from the everyday, ordinary things of life. Um, in some sense, camp is the practice of fasting our everyday rhythm of life to examine who we are and what we do. It's that chance to almost just fast from the day-to-day the -day in order to kind of gain some perspective on our lives. Camp invites us to reflect about who we are and where we are going. And it's amazing to see that happen in the lives of teens as they, they go to camp, as they pause from the regular, ordinary things of life to think about what it is uh, that they're doing. And, um, I believe Jesus models this practice like throughout the Gospels. Um, in Luke 4, 42 through 43, it says, When daybreak arrived, Jesus went to a deserted place. The crowds were looking for him. And when they found him, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of God's kingdom in other cities too, for this is why I was sent. So he continued preaching in Judean synagogues. Throughout his ministry, Jesus regularly withdrew from his everyday work of teaching and healing and discipling to spend time with the Father away from the crowds. In fact, Luke emphasizes this throughout his gospel that Jesus regularly, even though he was about doing so many things for the kingdom of God, regularly withdrew uh, for times of connecting and being in the presence of God. Uh, he was renewed in the presence of his Father, and he also gained, gained clarity in God's call on his life. And I think this is what's happening in the scripture that I just read. It would be tempting for Jesus to just do cool stuff for the crowds. It would be um, amazing for him just to kind of hang out in Capernaum and just keep drawing these vast amounts of crowds and just keep growing a community of people. But Jesus has a clear sense of his calling and why he was sent. So Luke often wants us to see that Jesus has a clear sense of calling and where he's going because of his regular practice of withdrawing and taking time away from the day-to-day -day work that he was called to do so that he can hear just this special, in a special way from God. So in connection to Jesus' regular practice of withdrawing and retreat, NY Camp is a practice like that. Camp invites us to withdraw and retreat from the everyday in order to be renewed in the presence of the Father and discover clarity in our lives. And as John was mentioning earlier, NY Camp exists to create space to encounter God through play, prayer, and worship. Now, I know what you're thinking, play. But it is true. We encounter God through play. Sometimes in youth ministry, we've understood play as something we just do to attract teens or fill time when we don't know what to do next. However, I really believe that play is a gift that can help us draw closer to God and to others. God can teach us through play. God can speak to us through play. Play has this way of breaking down walls that divide us. Play has a way of bringing us together. Playing together is a holy practice, if you will. I don't know if you've ever thought of play in that way, but it actually is 
a holy practice, something that God has created for us to participate and be in. So play isn't just something extra that we do at camp when we go. It's actually a part of camp that helps us become more like Jesus. It's not just something we do to attract teens. We don't just think of theme nights just for attraction, but there's actually something sacred and holy taking place in the practice of those things as we play together. God creates us and unifies us in some special and beautiful ways that sometimes only camp, the vehicle of camp, uh, play, can do. We also encounter God through prayer. We have personal times of prayer, community times of prayer, fixed times of prayer throughout the week of camp. And these rhythms of prayer help form us as the people of God, and they give us resources that we need uh, to go back home and, and apply those to our everyday life. God encountered us, encounters us through prayer. And lastly, God encounters us through worship. And as we think about worship, worship is a lifestyle. So, in other words, worship is everything that we do at camp. From the worship services to the 1 a.m. pizza parties in your room, right? Because we believe and we discover that the God who is powerfully with us in the worship service is the very same God who is powerfully with us when we're munching down Papa John's at 1 a.m. wondering if we'll ever sleep because of the indigestion in our, heart, in our stomachs, right? Like the same God is powerfully with us in the midst of all of those things. And so we encounter God through worship. Every part of camp is a sacred gift. It's a special time for us to be formed in the way of Jesus together. And that's, that's why we, we talk about and why camp exists to create space to encounter God through play, prayer, and worship. We really mean it. From the beginning of camp when you register to the very end of camp. All of these things are co-mingling together, connecting together in a way that form us to be more like Jesus um, and call us and give, this, give us a sense of when we spend time a whole week together in the presence and the face of Christ, and then we get to go forward into the different places uh, that God sends us to, there's something amazing that God does in the midst of all of that together. So as, as we think about why camp, uh, there are so many wonderful things that we can think of. But why do, why do we camp? Why do we retreat? Because just like Jesus discovered who he was, his identity came out of those times where he was away from the everyday, ordinary things of life so that he could reflect more of the Father's love in the world. So that's a little bit about the why of camp, and then we're going to move on to the next thing. <laughs> Well, in order for uh, every part of camp to be worship, we have to have rules. Yay! <laughs> not really, but they help us sometimes because, because, <laughs> because we're not prone to those things all the time. We live in a broken world, and people bring that brokenness and junk with them wherever they go. And so uh, we desire camp to be a place... Uh, that encourages people, that speaks value and life into people, and that draws them closer to God's heart instead of pushing them away or devaluing them or anything like that. And so uh, we have some rules in place to help protect in, in our students and help protect all of us that are there and hopefully help draw us closer to God's heart and uh, keep some of the brokenness that we bring with us at bay. So... Uh, we'll just run through some of those. And the first one that we have is, while we're at camp, uh, no adults or other students are supposed to be alone with a teen. So one-on-one, -on -one, um, unless it's out in the open, surrounded by other people in public areas, is really discouraged. And most of you probably know, just because of the culture we live in, um, with brokenness and accusations and all sorts of things that can just, abuse that can go wrong when you're in those kind of situations. And so to protect you and our students, um, one rule that we have, one guideline that we have, is no adults or other students alone with the teenager. Second rule is no coming and going from camp. Um, as much fun as it would be to spend every night in a hotel instead of a dorm, um, there's, we want everybody to be staying there. Uh, and the purpose of that is 
there's an emergency with one of your students and you're not there, well then it causes some different problems because, well what if there's a food allergy that got forgotten? Or what if there's something that we need to know about the student as we take them to the hospital? Or we need you to go to the hospital with them. The other thing is, <laughs> with coming and going from camp, is it leaves time that you're away from your students. Like this is a great time of camp. Camp is a great time of where we can we can be with our students 24-7 for five whole days. Mm -hmm. It's not that often that we get to do that. We normally only get them for maybe one to two hours a week. And so by coming and going, we lose that time. We lose that time where we can connect with them, where we can talk with them and build these relationships up. And so we ask everyone to stay at the camp once they arrive. Another thing that we live by is no weapons. It seems kind of... Uh, hopefully self-explanatory. And the tricky part is that basically anything in the hands of a junior high boy is a weapon. So <laughs> that's hard to discern sometimes. But you know, uh, knives and guns and even things like fireworks or nunchucks or lightsabers, we just, we're not gonna have those kind of prayer station responses this year. So we'll, Maybe just, next year. we'll just pass on that. Um, the other thing, no drugs, alcohol, e-cigarettes, anything that needs lit with a uh, flame or requires a flame to work also includes fireworks, just in case you thought you could get that by. Um, kind of an obvious reason, I mean, we, we want to keep our teens away from those things because we want to keep our teens healthy. Um, my great uncle just had both of his, both halves of his lungs removed because of smoking when he was a teenager. And so while some of our students, I'm sure, are, have done these things or are doing these things, uh, we want to make sure that we're careful not to bring these things to camp. That way we can kind of, and if there's a problem with that, we can have that discussion with our students. Yeah, so basically just be wise and help your students be wise in what they bring. Weapons, drugs, alcohol, illegal substances, pet hamsters, not welcome at camp. I don't want that stuff there. So, um, another rule, no one out of the cabins after lights out. Obviously this is to protect students um, because when you go out after lights out, usually things, good things don't happen. And so um, that's just a rule we live by. Once the lights are out, as counselors, we make sure everyone stays in our cabins with us. So. The other thing is no guys and gals cabins, no gals and guys cabins. Um, this includes pranks. Uh, I know that sometimes we can think that maybe, you know, if uh, somebody gets saran wrapped to a bed, it might be a little bit fun or to cause a little bit of rivalry between the guys and girls. But um, that's, it's an absolute no. And um, at least for middle school camp, and I'm sure for high school camp, it's an automatic parents get called and the student has to leave the camp. Um, and so we, we, this is a rule that we really, really need to follow. There are a lot of things um, that can go wrong whenever we start to have mixed cabins. Uh, no hazing. That's something we don't tolerate at camp. Nothing good ever comes from hazing. It's just people who get hurt and devalued. And like we said, camp is a place where we want to breathe God's life and value into hearts and not have uh, experiences that push people the other way. Um, keeping your shirts on whenever you're not at the lake or the water slide. Um, multiple, for, I, know, I know, Charlene, that's a really bad. Um, We made this rule for you. Yeah. <laughs> that was bad last year. <laughs> um, there's multiple reasons for this. Uh, we live in a world of where we can be a little bit envious of what other people look like. Uh, we can be a little bit envious of or even lustful of other people. Um, and so as much as, you know, Tom running around without a shirt on, I mean, wow. my body, it's not the same as Tom's anymore. <laughs> I wish I had Tom's body. Online, <laughs> <laughs> put pictures. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but seriously, um, I mean, there, there are a lot of things of where, I mean, we lust after other people. And we want to keep these images out of our students' head. We want to keep these images of well, I wish that I looked like that, and being envious of what other people look like. We want to keep those things from happening at camp because we want camp to be something that draws us closer to God, that draws our students closer to God. And so we want to make sure that we do everything that we can to make sure that that happens unhindered. 
Yeah, I basically just encourage your students to practice discernment with their clothing choices that um, modesty isn't the only, or immodesty isn't the only thing that distracts us. And so just kind of a holistic view of that is mm -hmm. just in all of our clothing choices as we go to camp, remember the purpose and let's just try to not uh, wear anything that's going to be a distraction to others. Um, no public or private displays of affection. Um, this is one that is hard sometimes to kind of enforce. Um, I was one of the students that <coughs> I definitely made out with my girlfriend at camp. Um, and yeah, I was the one. <laughs> now, now I'm on the camp board. Um, but it, it creates, it kind of, it also creates a time of where, I mean, my youth pastor was able to talk to me about that. And while it may be very, very awkward for us to break a couple students up that are, you know, sitting way, way too close together, um, we need to do that because there's a lot of things that can lead to inappropriate things happening at camp. There's a lot of things that can lead to a lot of inappropriate things <laughs> happening at camp. Um, but we also want to be careful about the way that we do this. Um, we were on a mission trip one time, and I, my best friend and his girlfriend were sitting very, very close to each other. And during Sunday school, the... Sorry. You're okay, man. Sorry. Um, <laughs> during Sunday school, during Sunday school, they got called out by the pastor of the church in front of 60 other students. And I think there was about 30 or 40 other adults. They never went on a mission trip after that. It didn't matter if it was with that same church or not. They never did, and they still have it because of that one experience. And so with this and with all of these rules, practice discernment on the way that you approach it. Practice grace. Be careful and understand that if, however you do this, making sure that they understand that it's for their best interest. Does that include hand-holding, by the way? Yes. Uh, the way that I have always heard it is... Um, well, it's a little bit old school. Guys are blue, girls are pink, and no purpling. Um, <laughs> and so that means hand holding. That means hugging. Well, really hugging, honestly. Um, anything. Um, adults, if your spouses are coming, practice discernment in how you approach. Uh, practice ways that are healthy. That, and if a student says no purple or no purpling then show them your wedding ring and say, well, this is a license to be able to hold hands. <laughs> um, no sharing a bed for any reason. Uh, and this is just a hardline rule. There'll be uh, maybe students in your cabin that are buddies and have been buddies forever that they've done this before and think it's okay to do at camp. And it's not, unfortunately. Uh, the world we live in, people are pressured and shamed uh, and forced into situations sometimes that they're not comfortable with. And it can be really hurtful and painful and abusive. And so in order to protect all of our students from a situation like that, we just make the hard line rule of nobody shares a bed for any reason. Yeah, put, I was going to say, and pushing bunk beds together is another thing, too, with the girls' cabins. I think <coughs> yeah. I would even, I would say no yeah, siblings say no. even too, because sometimes that's, that's a place where it happens most often with people you know and people you, you trust. So, so yeah, just as a hardline protective rule, no sharing in bed. Um, all interior doors to rooms must remain open. Um, for both Camp Table Rock, this is an important one because they go off into different rooms, each cabin does. Um, for... Sunstream for the middle school camp. Um, this is also very important because we have some rooms that only house eight students and some rooms that house 12 students. And so by keeping those doors open, it kind of helps us with that ratio a little bit too. Of uh, Maybe one view sponsor had to step outside or something by having those doors open, it allows the sponsors in the other room to be able to see what's going on and make sure that nothing inappropriate happens. So we want to take uh, that kind of stuff seriously. We also want to take physical safety seriously. And so we have nurses that are with us at camp that are available. I encourage 
um, you guys to utilize while, while we're there if injuries should occur. And uh, we know they're not going to, but if they do, <laughs> then we have them there just in case. Um, but I guess I should do this now. Um, if students especially, yeah, hit their heads, uh, just with the seriousness of head injuries and things we know about it now, we just, one rule we have is if you have a head injury or hit your head a certain way, um, we want you to see a nurse immediately and just make sure you go through the protective measures of that. So, so that's some of our guidelines. Any questions on that stuff that haven't already been addressed? Can we talk really quick about medication, how they can't give it to students? Yes, sir, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if your student has medication, and even if you have medication, bring those to the nurses. Doesn't matter if you know how to take your own medication and you take your medication on time. Um, make sure to give this to the nurses. Uh, nurses are the ones that are, they, they have the training that we do not. Um, they have the responsibility that thankfully we do not as well. Um, and so make sure that all medicine, doesn't matter if it's Benadryl, doesn't matter if it's Tylenol, whatever it may be, has to go to the nurse. Um, even Tums, honestly. But this way it makes sure that once students get their medicine on time, which is a struggle for students, uh, it's a struggle for me, um, but then it also makes sure that we, we don't accidentally do something wrong, that we don't accidentally give the wrong medicine at the wrong time and mess it up because we're not trained to give out medicine. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest, none of us are trained on the right dosage of anything. Um, and so make sure that the nurses are the ones that, that's what they're there for. That's why we have them at camp. Mm -hmm. Or you give the medication and they come to me and I give the medication, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's definitely. Yeah, so make sure that the nurse, make sure every, the nurses, no matter what it is, that they always have the medication. And you shouldn't have it on you at all mm -hmm. because you don't know what happens whenever you leave the cabin. Mm -hmm. um, or even, you know, whenever you leave your backpack sitting beside uh, you don't know if students are getting into that at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, like, you know, no going into each other's cabins. You know, that's a send home. Are there any other, like, this is a call your parents send home kind of thing? I would say weapons would probably... <clears throat> Making fun of the camp board. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the only other serious one yeah. is, is really probably serious violence. Right. Okay. Um, that's... <clears throat> a couple kids get into a wrestling match, get a little frustrated, that's one yeah. thing. But if we, if we have a serious risk of violence, we have to send them home. Right. Okay. Uh, that's really the only other hard line they have to go home. Right. We do our best to make room. And, and really have grace right. in any situation we possibly can, right. um, both legally and, and ethically. And I haven't ever been to NYI camp um, with you guys, so what is the rule on phones and electronics? So that is our next what point. What a segue. Oh. Thank you. What a segue. <laughs> so, uh, I realized that I got all the fun rules on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so phones. Um, it's actually something that I've been trying to give up for Lent, but for today I had mine on me just to kind of give a small example. Um, I've been awake for two hours and 15 minutes, and I have already picked up my phone, um, I think it was 32 times, mm -hmm. and I have spent 45 minutes on my phone this morning. Now part of that is I had directions pulled up because I always get lost coming here, but then... Don't, I'm not from the same place. Um, but also, I mean, and when I was in eighth grade, I got my first phone. Um, I think I'm one of the youngest people in this room. Um, everyone had cell phones. It's a part of life now. I mean, even now, I mean, we, you can't even go to school without looking at a screen. It's something that... It to, stop laughing at me. <laughs> I, I'm laughing at the eighth grade. I got a phone too in eighth grade. It plugged in in my room. <laughs> it, sucked. it had a little space on the digits for pictures, yeah, and so I had pictures of my friends, you know? That's cool. Oh, it was corded, yeah. Nice. Um, to a large degree, we've become addicted to our phones. Uh, I've seen adults that didn't grow up on phones the exact same way, but, I mean, students are getting phones, and... 
Yeah. So I think I saw a student in first grade that had a phone. We play games on our phone. We do all these different things. And in a lot of ways, we thirst for our phone. And so by, not, by asking our students not to have them at camp, um, to possibly asking our parents to honestly not even send the phones at camp, that is what we would prefer. However, we do recognize there's some students that we might bring that have only been to our church once or twice, and so our, the parents don't have that good of a relationship with us to be able to trust us. All of our adults will be allowed to have their phones on them, but we do ask that you stay off of them as much as possible. But for our students, this is a time that is set aside so that they can get away from their normal routine, from their everyday life from constantly getting on their phones to playing games, to talking to their friends, to even getting on the news. Mm -hmm. It's a time of where they can be separated from that. And while, yes, it may cause a lot of anxiety, it causes me a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. it, it allows them to kind of see that they've been filling their lives with this, mm -hmm. of how much they're filling their lives with this. And it's, it's a fasting from their phones. Mm -hmm. It's a time of where they can realize that and then they can they can maybe make some adjustments in their life that maybe they don't look at their phone so much. So maybe they keep their phone inside whenever they go outside to play with friends or something. But it allows them to be present. It allows them to be able to have one less hindrance of God working in their lives at camp. That it's one less thing that could get in their way. And so that is why we, we ask for you to have those conversations with your students to be able to talk to them about that, to talk to the parents about that, that yes, we understand emergencies happen, and if there is an emergency, that the adults have their phones on them, that the adults have their phones turned up, and if there's a problem, then we will, we will happily answer our phones. But for our students' sake, for our students' spiritual development, we ask that they stay at home. Do you want to... No, I think that's great. I think uh, we had an event a couple weeks ago, and uh, as a fundraiser here at church, so I mean the communication is, you know, if you can leave your phone at home, if you can't leave it at home, leave it in the car. If you can't leave it in the car, give it to an adult. Um, and I think then we're clear about um, making a joint effort together across all of us to both ask students to, to take care of leaving the phones at home, but also I think the other part is to set a good example too. Mm -hmm. Um, whenever, if you do see your students that have phones, because there will be students that sneak their phone, um, if it's in the cabin, ask them to put it away. If it's out while they're on the field, ask them to put it away or for you to hold on to it because we play a lot of games that can get a little bit rough and I'm sure parents would rather not have a busted up phone that they have to replace when the student gets home. Um, and then it allows, just like for any of the other rules, it allows for conversation to be had of maybe say, hey, let's take a look at the, that part of your phone that keeps track of how much you've been on your phone. Like maybe take a look at that and just see how much you've been on it just today when you've been trying to avoid us seeing you on your phone. And so be very, very graceful in the way that you handle this because, again, this is something students have lived with. This is something that is regular in their lives that students, it has always been a part of their lives. And so have grace and understanding that students don't understand the reason we ask them not to have phones. But this provides a way for us to be able to explain that. It provides a way for us to be able to say and talk about how whenever we have things up, whenever we're only focused in on one little thing, it, it allows us to miss the ways that God is working around us. So I get to talk about modesty. Woo. Yay! Um, <laughs> so we just wanted to take a few minutes to dive into this a little bit deeper, kind of like with the phones thing, because it just, oh, there's so many different av avenues and ways to talk about it. And especially because we noticed last year, at least for the high school students, when they went to Camp Table Rock, Camp Table Rock has a lot of, of rules. Um, like even on the swimwear, like the paragraph was like this mm -hmm. that we sent to our parents. And so, and I knew, like I listened to other moms just saying like, I don't even know how to, I'm going to have to go buy a new swimsuit that fits like these 14 requirements. And I don't even know if that's even 
like if they even sell these things. So we just we looked at that and realized like it's it's frustrating and sometimes degrading, especially like as a woman when the mm-hmm. list of our modesty rules looks like this, and then for guys it's like one line, like don't wear a speedo, you know. And so it's like oh, like there's got to be some balance here. So I just asked if we could talk about it a little bit. Um, and so what, at least for um, for Table Rock, Camp Table Rock, we've decided to instead of putting that giant paragraph of all the things just to simplify and say wear whatever swimsuit you want ladies but just know that you are going to wear a tank top and shorts uh, at all times to cover it and that just eliminates all that stuff because what they're doing at table rock is all the boating stuff they're not swimming in a pool Mm -hmm. i mean they're jumping in the lake they're you know and it just it it's just better if, if it's just that way so it's not like they're swimming most of everything they're doing is like they're out on the water and so that just makes that it just takes all the questions out, is this appropriate, is it not? Just just tell your students, wear whatever, just put a tank top and some athletic shorts over it, and you're fine. And I, I just think that just makes it so much more simple, and then parents don't have to go buy a new swimsuit and all the things. And then the same with the boys, like to just when, when, they're, um, when they're going down there just to put a shirt on. And it's a problem, problem solved. No, no, no issues there, and then that just makes it across the board. Now for middle school camp, they, they do not have all of those rules. So that's where we say tankini or one piece for the girls. And then, um, like we said earlier, you always need to have a cover up. However, um, we're not going to use the word cover up. We're just going to say t-shirt and shorts or the towel around the waist because cover up can mean just a lacy thing with lots of holes in it that doesn't really cover anything up. (laughs) So um, just saying for your girls, like when you're going down, just put t-shirt on. Guys, same thing. When you're going down the lake, you need your shirt on. Um, or pool or whatever. Wait, do they have a pool at Sun yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry. Can't remember. I knew they had the water slide. But yeah, so that just when you're not actually in the water, you've got your swimsuit covered up. So that just eliminates a lot of things if we're just blanket across the board about, about that. But then a couple other things. So I think what helps with modesty the most is if you just have a conversation as a counselor before camp starts. When you're sitting down with all the, like, kind of the rules like where we say no guys and girls cabins blah 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 if you just hit modesty a little bit and this is for guys and girls um guy counselors please don't just leave that up to the women i mean the the rate of pornography for teen girls right now is through the roof and what they're looking at with guys images it's this is not just a guy thing anymore like this is a girl thing too and so i i just want to advocate (laughs) for for our girls that we need the boys to also be aware of this um and so if you could just boast it down, let's just have a modesty conversation that like, like John has said in the beginning, we want to eliminate as many distractions as possible to try to just make this a, a safe space. And so, um, so as a, as a guy counselor, like one of, one of the things you can say is that like, we're not doing cut off t-shirts, girls counselor, same thing, but like I've seen them for, I mean, they're barely wearing a shirt, but it's just like everything's right. cut out. And so that's not a thing. It needs to be a whole t-shirt. So the same thing with going down to the lake. If they just throw on one of those, like, yep, no, that's not actually a t-shirt. That's a thing with a bunch of holes. So please go put on an actual t-shirt. But if you say that ahead of time and they know the expectation, that just eliminates a lot of that. Um, and so, and that's, that's just really helpful. And for the girls, um, when I was at, back when we did camp at Youth Front, like 12 years ago, uh, they had a rule for the girls that I thought was really helpful. It was like, the don't do the four B's, which was saying um, boobs, which included cleavage, no boobs, no butts. So no butt cheeks hanging out of your shorts, um, no bellies and no bras. And to say those four things, like um, the girls were like, okay, we can remember that. And that was just really helpful. So you can just tell your girls, hey, if your shorts are showing too much out of the back, like we're gonna ask you to change. If your shirt is a high, cause that's the thing right now, like the, the crop tops, mm-hmm. like we're just gonna ask you to change. Um, and if, or if your bra straps hanging out, whatever, we're going to ask you to change. Um, so it's just really simple. What I tell my youth is like, just wear a t-shirt and shorts all weekend, y'all. Like just do that. You're covered. It, it covers all the things. We don't have to worry about anything. Just that, that's just make that be the dress code. T-shirt and shorts were covered. And then you're not worrying about strap width or all the things. So, uh, it's just, it's just a way of just kind of putting things across the board and making it simple. And if you have that. If you have that conversation before it starts, usually that eliminates a lot of your problems of having to go back and doing, hey, I need you to change later. Um, It also keeps, because 
what's what's frustrating with any rule and the, the phone thing will be the same thing if if one person does it after it's been made a rule then everybody starts talking about it oh my gosh you see they're on their phone why can't i have mine oh my gosh she's wearing that why can't i he's he's wearing that why can't i and so it becomes a thing and so if we can just put that out to begin with it takes it takes a lot of that out and it takes a lot of the shame out of it too because as a student if you if someone has to go up to you and say that's inappropriate you need to change the shame that comes with that is huge, and that's not what we're wanting to do. So please be careful with grace and what you're saying. Um, and as a female who has had to have someone get on me before, like someone saying, you right now are making guys look at you because you have what you're wearing is, is the not the thing to say. Is not the thing to say. Um, especially when we've had students that their concept of modesty is nowhere near anything we've ever been aware of. And so just, just know that, just say like, and you can blame it on the camp. This is a camp role that we wear t-shirts and shorts here. You know, like you don't have to be like, you're inappropriate or you're not doing the right thing. It's just, well, this just camp role makes it simple. It takes that right out of that. And so uh, just leave it there with lots of grace, being very, very careful in how we say it and um, just keeping us all on the same page. And that would be great. Um, and as youth pastors and as youth workers, um, the more that you can set your teens up for success ahead of time when you're telling them like dress code and what to wear, that is so helpful so that parents even know just before they get on the bus. Uh, so they're bringing the correct things is really, really helpful. Um, any questions on that? Yes. What would be a, a best way to approach that? Um, like as a youth pastor? If you see somebody and need to address it. So mm -hmm. What would be the best words instead of what not to say? Okay. To yeah. So, um, I think it, it kind of depends on, I think, I think whoever it is needs to have a relationship with the student. So if, if you're like another camps counselor and you see something, I mean, it might be like if, so like if you saw somebody going down and like, oh, yep, you forgot your cover up, run back and go, you know, you can just yell something simple like that. But if it's, I would say if it's someone in your, in your cabin, try to, try to go get to the counselor or whoever it is that they came with. And, and just have a conversation with them of just saying, hey, you know what, we've just kind of got these some blanket rules here. And remember how we talked about in the beginning that we weren't gonna, these are things we weren't gonna wear. So we're just, um, so I'm just gonna ask you, cause this isn't really on, the, what you're wearing isn't really on the list of the things that we said we were gonna wear. So I, can you just go throw on a t-shirt for me really quick or something like that? And just making it simple about, this is just a general rule, not shaming about um, how your body is making someone else feel. Because that is just not, that's just not the way to do it and the place to do that. So, uh, but again, I've, from what I've realized is that if you can, if you can have the conversation in the beginning and just say, here's what we're doing, here's the expectation for the week, that really helps. And then if they forget, you can be like, oh, you probably just forgot, but remember, da, 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 and it just takes the shame right out of it. And I, I haven't, I mean, sometimes you have students fight it a little bit, but if it's a blanket thing across the board, it's usually pretty general and easy. So, any other questions? No. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being here today. Um, we'll have a little bit of time after I get done here talking to where we can kind of address specifics of each camp, uh, just so that if there's a question in particular to the camp you're going to, or if you're going to both, it'll help you out and kind of clear things up. Uh, but the last thing I wanted to touch on, which is not exactly a fun or happy topic, is we, we need to achieve certain ratios at camp for adults to students. Um, and a couple of times in the last few years, we've come really close to not having those ratios, uh, which the reason we have those ratios, which it's so many per students per adult, is, is really for safety, both the adult safety and the student safety. Uh, and the ratio that we're working with at camps this year is eight to one. So we are asking, Every church, if you send eight students, please, please send an adult. We do not want to turn away any students. We absolutely don't want to turn away students. But we have to have our adult ratios, both legally and ethically. Uh, and so if your church is sending eight students or more, please send an adult. And if you have students that you're sending with another church, so, for instance, I know College Church, they, they send several vehicles, and so some of the smaller churches will bring, uh, or, or they'll bring students to the College Church meeting area, and they'll take them down. You are responsible for that adult ratio, not College Church. Uh, similar to, to Central or Shawnee or, or whatever church that you'll be bringing in uh, with. So, that is, that is something that is important to us. 
because we really, really want to take safety seriously. Um, now, ages of counselors. Uh, so for uh, six, seven, eight camp, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're taking 19 and up. So they're taking 19 year olds and up for counselors. Uh, so if you have 19 year olds, college kids in your church that are willing to go serve at six, seven, eight camp, we'd love to have them. For senior high camp, we bumped that up by a year. We're going to say 20 and up. Uh, we kind of think that year separated from high school is important, uh, both for safety reasons uh, and because it just helps with the maturity level. Um, it helps if the teens see those people as adults and not just people that were in youth group last year that they were throwing water balloons at six months ago. Uh, so that's, that's why we have that. Uh, the, the nature of this is that safety comes first. Uh, and we don't, we don't want to suppose the worst of people, but we have to make sure our teens are safe. It's why we have the rules. It's why we have uh, some of these guidelines. Uh, during camp, we hope that none of this stuff comes up. That's our goal by covering it now, that we just get a smooth week of camp. Nothing, nothing goes wrong. We don't have to send any kids to the hospital, uh, and it'll be great. Uh, but the nature of it is we do have to cover that stuff now. Uh, so thank you guys for being here today. Thank you for those that will be watching it online. Uh, this is important to us because we love camp. We love camp and we love teens. So we're excited to see you guys at camp this year. Uh, and in future years, hopefully, uh, thank you for watching this. Thank you for being here. Uh, and then I think we are good to just kind of cover some, some individual questions now. Oh, Can register. Register. Register online. Uh, KCDNYI.org has all the links you need. Uh, for right now, already. right now has all the links you need both for counselors and for students um, we're doing things a little bit differently this year with our registration uh, our our counselors are going to go through a registrar Shannon over here she's helping us out uh, she's awesome and she's going to help our counselors get lined up make sure you have all the background checks you need everything like that and then uh, for senior high camp the campground itself is handling all of our teen registration and then for junior high camp, uh, it is, oh my gosh, her name Megan. is just slipping. Megan is going to be uh, handling all our registration for our students. And again, we're, we're, so all of the sponsors will be going through one registration process. Mm -hmm. uh, and then our students will be a little bit different depending on which camp they're going through. And that's mostly just because we need all of our adults to do background checks. Uh, we need to make sure that we've got all that stuff lined up. Again, we just want to do our due diligence so our week of camp just goes really, really smooth. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, so medical waivers, because I registered my kids yesterday, so yes. I just wanted to double check. Um, for 9 through 12 camp, mm -hmm. they don't have to do a KCD medical waiver, right? We're just using Camp Table Rocks. We just use Camp okay. Table Rocks this year. Yeah, last year is a little bit confusing because we made them do two, and they ended up being basically identical. And so theirs covers everything we need to know. Yep. And so if they have it on file, we have access to it, so that's all we need. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, that's a very good thing. Less paperwork, the better. So we can consolidate it. Uh, other questions? And it can be specific to either camp. We've got people from both camps here. I guess we should kind of specify that here real quick. So uh, we've got a 6, 7, 8 camp. You guys want to stand up real quick? Uh, so we have Tom, Jen, and Noah. Uh, and they'll, they'll be helping us out for our 6, 7, 8 camp, which is awesome. And then Rob, Brandon, and I... Uh, you guys can stand up too if you want. We will be uh, senior high or 9 through 12. They'll, they'll just give you the nod. Uh, so if you need, if, if you see names on emails, that's kind of some of the faces. There's a few others involved in different places, but right now we're kind of the core of each of those groups. Um, yeah, so that's, that's who we are. Um, anything else? I was just thinking about payment for at least for middle school. Um, as, as you guys, as youth pastors and youth leaders, notice that, like, uh, the Parents will make the checks out, like it's very specific how that goes and we will be bringing one one check with us for registration for after mm -hmm. and there's like the registration fee anyway. So if you can just pay attention because I think for both camps it's a little different and, little and how that goes. So um, just read, just read mm -hmm. um, and that, that'll help you just explain to your parents in case they're sending the check to the wrong person or mailing it to the wrong way or whatever. Um, it just helps to, it'll make that easier for you mm -hmm. if you can explain that mm -hmm. well as you're signing or sending out like emails for your parents to sign up and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you have sign up issues for whatever reason, please let us know. Uh, for senior high camp, and I believe 
or for 9 through 12 and for 6, 7, 8, there's a deposit yep. uh, that's involved with the initial sign up. It's not the full amount. No. Uh, they ask for a deposit up front, and then yeah, the full amount comes later, and you bring that check with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that allows time for fundraising, kind of splits up the, pay, the cost a little bit, makes it a little bit easier for some families to handle the junk, especially if they're sending like six kids. Uh, so that's how that works. There are scholarships available online. Uh, there's a district scholarship. Once you are signed up, you can apply for a district scholarship. Uh, and then uh, it's up to $75, I think, this year. I, I'm almost positive. That's what it was last year. I don't think we changed it. Um, and so that's a significant chunk of camp off. Uh, we really we want to make sure that cost doesn't keep any student away from camp. If they want to go, we want to find a way to get them to camp. Uh, and so if you have any issues with that, please steer them towards the scholarships. If, if even that's not enough, we, we can have conversations. We, we, there's a several churches on the district last year that kind of requested a special, essentially, grant from the district to get a couple teens there. We were happy to give that to them. Uh, we just we want teens at camp. Uh, we're, we're excited. We think we can build on the momentum of what happened at NYC this last year, what happened to Breakaway. Um, this is, in, in our rhythm of our NYI year, this is kind of like the penultimate moment. Yeah. Uh, so we, it starts with Breakaway, and then we kind of just spin into this cycle of, of, of doing these different events that ultimately leads to what camp can be. Uh, so we're, we're really excited for what it can be. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah. I think we're done a few minutes early, which is A-OK -okay with me. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to come up and ask us. Uh, we want to help. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, if you have other people that you know that, that are going to camp but weren't here, please steer them to our website. That's where this video will be. Uh, and so we're going to ask that all of our counselors at some point watch this video just so we're all on the same page. Uh, so thank you guys again, and thank you for us.